Back in spring 2020, a man claiming to be visiting here from the future, the year 3036, claimed a number of disturbing things about our near and long-term future. Some of these things go as follows. There will be several major wars. One of them will be World War III. But there will be dire consequences. The war will be massive and cause billions to die. In 2052, the power will go out across the world for five years. Poor air quality will make people live in pods in the 3000s. In the 3000s, no entertainment outside of reading for educational purposes will be allowed. And during that time, dogs and cats will be living in zoos. Let's explore more, shall we? Some of you may have connected the date, 3036. This year is when the supposed time traveler John Teeter came from. As far as we know, these two are not connected. They don't have the same details either. But this time traveler does paint as dismal portrait of our future as John Teeter does. On March 12th, 2020, in Pinellas County, Florida, it was reported in newspapers and news broadcasts that a man was arrested for stealing bananas and fruit. The motive behind this is we are exploring his uh, mindset and any possibility that mental health played a role. This man, while arrested, claimed to be from the year 3036. Authorities couldn't identify him. He had no birth record, no social security number, and no identification on file. When asked why he was stealing, the man claimed he thought clothing and food was free in the marketplaces. It was where he was from. Under further interrogation, he revealed he was part of something called the New Society in the year 3036. The police, of course, were baffled and stunned. This man seemed to appear out of nowhere. They began to believe this man was suffering from delusions. But how can someone have zero identification and trace of their birth and life in this day and age? They went on to test his DNA. When it came back, there was no match. They also ran his picture through the missing persons report. Again, no match. Since he didn't seem to pose a threat, and stealing fruit is not a felony, the police ended up letting him go. Of course, the media had a hold of the story and people online went into a buzz. This led to a documentary filmmaker tracking down this individual. How they tracked this individual down is unknown, it's never discussed. But they managed to get his number and they gave him a call. Uh, yep, my name's Jack Helms. Is this Sebastian? Uh, yes, my name's Jack. I'm a journalist and documentary filmmaker. I uh, was really intrigued by your story. Just curious if I can have a quick minute of your time to talk. What about? Well, like I was saying, I'm uh, absolutely fascinated by your story. And uh, I I'm sure I can speak for everyone when I say this, but uh, I'd love to know more um, about the future. Off not knowing. What's that? I said you're better off not knowing. In this call, we get his first name, Sebastian. We don't get a last name, just Sebastian. So it should be safe to rule out John Tito. After the first call, Sebastian decided to sit down and allow a filmed interview. In this interview, he said he traveled here by accident. Now, he never discloses how exactly he traveled through time. He says that people are aware of time travel in his time, but only military or officials can use it. It's highly regulated. The interviewer did not inquire any further, so we don't know what his role was in this new society. He said he traveled back in time because in 3036, it was the end of humanity and living species on Earth. It is believed by some there, mostly the Beneathers, more on them in a bit, in his time, that it is the return of the Anunnaki from the planet Nibiri. Now, the planet Nibiri is known in UFO communities as the mysterious planet X that some believe lie just outside of our solar system, that orbits the sun in such an extreme, odd and wide orbit is yet to be detected. In some of these theories, every 5,000 years or so, the planet comes back and the Anunnaki live on this planet, and, and there's cataclysms and, and craziness that comes along with it. Now. The planet X isn't as quite as crazy as it seems. There are a few well-regarded scientists who have been investigating what they believe to be a large massive object somewhere in the outskirts of our solar system. The Anunnaki were gods that the ancient Sumerians worshipped and wrote their myths and stories about. Unfortunately, he doesn't really elaborate much on 
this event or details on why he thinks this is happening or why people think this is happening. So we'll go on from there. He goes on to describe the events that happened between now and then. He says, there is a war called the vaccine war. He says billions will die without a vaccine chip. These chips get placed in the hand. Everyone will get a vaccine chip and it's mandatory by what he calls the corporation. You won't be able to travel or go to work or go to school without it. If you don't have it, you're what they call a beneather. The beneathers are people who refuse the vaccine and are thus cast out of society. They live under the cities in tunnels. They refer to themselves as the believers, but the rest of society calls them the beneathers. These beneathers uh, can't live past 40 on average because the air quality is so poor that no one can survive out in the normal airspace for very long. He says, the USA will no longer exist, no government exists. The world is run by what he calls the corporation. It started with three major corporations. The US was under the Rothschilds Corporation, then between Gavi, a Bill Gates corporation, and Amazon was the other one. They controlled the other areas of the world and the Rothschild group controlled the US, North America version. They would eventually all emerge and become the corporation. Not much more detail is given. In 2052, December to be exact, everything goes dark for five years. So all electronics, uh, the internet, power, all goes dark. He's vague on the details, but it says this event was blamed on terrorism at the time. He said it goes dark for five years, but it takes the world 20 years to get the power back online. Unfortunately, he doesn't really go into much detail about this. He just says that there's a lot of anarchy and a lot of chaos and turmoil that goes on for 20 years. So it may be possible that he meant in 20 years, there's a 20 year reaction to it and then five years, but it does seem to be a contradictory, but I believe he means it took five years to get the power back online and 20 years to get everything to settle down a little bit. In his time, zoos contain rabbits, dogs, and cats. Dogs and cats and little animals like this are considered rare and exotic. Larger animals have well went extinct. There are thousands of miles of land dedicated to wind turbines, reflecting mirrors, and solar panels. This is apparently how all the energy is manufactured in the future, in his time. So a little bit of the life of what it's like to be living in his time in 3036. He goes on to say, children are assigned caring ones, as he calls them, which is a robot that looks after them from birth, primarily for health reasons, up to the age of 16, uh, which is the age that they're allowed to have children. So these robots replace their parents. They are your parents. Uh, they can also detain you and maintain order. There are no schools and it's all taught through AI. No one practices religion in the future. If you practice it, you are banished to be with the beneathers. Mating is allowed, but only allowed to mate up to three times a year until impregnated. Women are highly monitored. He doesn't go into detail with what exactly that means. Men are given hormone therapy to control their urges. Again, doesn't really go into detail of what that means. There is only a set time period sex and mating is allowed. If one is caught doing this outside of the parameters, one of the robots, the caring ones, will remove them and are unalived and possibly used for food. He doesn't specify food for whom. Holidays in the future are down to about two days. Uh, two main days of celebration, the Day of the United, which celebrates the merger of the three corporations, and the Day of the Caring One, celebrating when the robots came online. There is a global currency. It is all done through the bank and the chip in everyone's hand. In this documentary, a DNA test was done off hair strands of this man, and there was no link to anybody in the database. The second analysis shows zero link to any race or ethnicity. This concluded the interview. The documentary filmmakers wanted to get another interview, so they tried to call Sebastian. They got a hold of them. All that was said was he wasn't being honest about how he got here and abruptly ended the call. Sorry, I can't. I, um, I wasn't being completely honest with you about how I got here. They desperately wanted to get more information from Sebastian, so they went to his apartment. He wasn't there. All of his stuff was still in the apartment, so they spoke to the landlord. They couldn't reach him. Time went on, and then on May 13th, 2020, a burned body was found of a male that fits the description of Sebastian. He was also missing a hand. 
the same hand that had the chip in it. The body could not be identified, and Sebastian was never heard from again, and his hand has never been found. So I discovered this story on social media sites like Reddit, but more importantly, TikTok. TikTok has, for the last bit, had a lot of users claiming they are time travelers. They mostly later get debunked, but a lot of users either love going along with the story or believe them. I like to believe too. It would be cool to talk to a time traveler from the future. However, it's never a good idea to just believe things. Get caught up in the story, sure, that's fine. But when you watch this documentary, although well done, there are a few things that when you think about it, makes it pretty obvious it's not true. For one, it's way too obvious for every conspiracy theory out there. Nibiri, the Anunnaki, too on the nose, too obvious. The Rothschilds and Bill Gates corporations, again, far too obvious. Not to mention, did they discover some sort of immortality gene? Not explained why they would be around in the year 336. His explanation as to why humanity had to be wiped out for the Anunnaki's return, well, there wasn't one, and that brings me to issue two. The interviewer did not follow up on statements like, like, did the Anunnaki need all humans and animals to be removed from Earth for the return, or was the return the cause of it? Never really goes into detail. What was the method of time travel he used? Could you go back? Go anywhere else? What was your life specifically like there? Did you have a child? Was your robot a nice robot? Did you? How did you feel about the robot? Did you ever get caught doing something you weren't supposed to? What was your job or role there before you left? The interviewer just let Sebastian talk with no follow-up. Number three, the vaccine wars. Well, this was made back in 2020, the height of the pandemic, and the vax, anti-vax thing was a pretty hot-boiled topic back then. So at the time, if you watched it then, you might believe, yeah, I can see this. But since it didn't happen, and definitely billions didn't die, or a big war never happened, and is unlikely to happen, we can put a damper on that one as well. Of course, the largest tell is, in all the news articles that they show, and the media that they show reporting on this story, they're all fake. In the documentary, you never see the name of the paper or the media outlet. You do a Google search and they're nowhere to be found. Some argue the government and big tech would remove them. Okay, it's possible. But it's certainly too odd to not show the names of the paper or broadcast station on any of these articles. Now, while this is a fun tale, in my opinion, it does nothing but lead to more ridicule for the community interested in these topics. While a fun romp, it does little to further any true inquiry to the topic of time travel and time travelers. The documentary is what falls into the category of mockumentary. Though on Amazon Prime it is listed under documentary. Of course, if this is a psyops made in order to bring skepticism and mockery to these communities, it certainly wouldn't be the first one. Okay, so now it's time to tell me what you think. Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you want to see more things like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.